What's up, divas? What's up, Debo? So it's your girl, and I'm back. It is real talk diva time, and <clears throat> I'm sitting here in my living room relaxing. So I haven't done a real talk in like three weeks. Has it been three weeks? The last one that I did was on the 28th. Yeah, the 28th of November. So I'm not really sure if it's been three weeks, but you know, I have been out on medical leave, medical rest, whatever. I've had my hysterectomy and I do have a vlog for that, you guys. But let me tell you something that I honestly really did think that it was going to be easy. I know I said in the video how I was going to basically um, edit my videos while I was, you know, relaxing and recovering. I was going to make some wigs. Let me tell y'all, I really was not able to make any wigs like that. I mean, like I made like, I want to say like I made like three and that's nothing for me. I can make like three in three days, but I made three in like three weeks. And you know, it's been a long healing process. I really did think, I, I really took it lightly for a full hysterectomy surgery. Like seriously, I took a, I took it lightly. So, and I'm still in pain. Like, you know, it hurts to walk sometimes. But let me tell y'all real quick. So, first of all, I don't even remember them telling me it's time to go to sleep for the surgery. So, you know, when I went in, you know, the lady that actually was prepping me and like taking my vitals and stuff, she was actually the same nurse. Her name is Sue. And she's amazing. She was the same nurse who, who prepped me like two years ago, November. I want to say November 16th for my ablation surgery, which was like, it wasn't a partial hysterectomy or anything like that. It was just to like get rid of the fibroids or something. But anyway, so she was there again. And um, <clears throat> me and I was talking and stuff. And then the girl who took like the blood and stuff. She came in and pricked me without like acknowledging or you know what I'm saying? But she didn't put me she didn't put anything in me but the catheter. Was it the catheter? It was the IV thing that was gonna go in my hand, but there wasn't anything attached to it, like there wasn't any type of medication attached to it. It was just the actual IV plug and it was empty. So when it was time for me to get surgery, they would be able to just, you know, put it in. So <clears throat> I get wheeled into the surgery room and I have to sit on, I have to, you know, get up off the bed and just sit because they're putting something in my spine so that way the whole bottom half of my body could be numb, which is great. You know what I'm saying? And so they do this, they numb my body, like they give me the stuff, they put the stuff in my spine and it wasn't like an epidural, but it's kind of like the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're having a baby. And so I got back up, you know, I, I lay back down and like slowly but surely I could feel like my legs were getting heavy. Like, you know, it felt like my legs were going to sleep. And let me tell you something, that stuff that they put in your back had nothing to do with anesthesia, putting me to sleep. I don't know when they put that shit in me to put me out. But the next thing you know, I woke up and there was a nurse next to me talking about, how are you feeling? I'm like looking at her like, what? The only thing I could say was, did you wake me up or did I wake up on my own? Because I don't really know. I don't even remember going to sleep, okay? Like straight up, I don't even remember going to sleep. So when I woke up, you know, I don't even remember them putting me in my room because the first place I woke up was the recovery room. And then the second place I woke up was my own bedroom, not in my house, but at the hospital. And um, I had a patch on my arm and... I had a breathing, I had breathing tubes in my nose and um, IVs everywhere and, you know, like a catheter so I could go to the bathroom. So, and my heart rate was like really fast. So, and my blood pressure was up real bad. So, anyway, everything went smooth, but when the doctor came in to see me, he ended up having to take everything. So I don't have nothing. He took both my fallopian tubes, both my ovaries, my cervix, my uterus. Like he didn't leave me with a goddamn thing. And the reason for this is because I wish he would have woke my ass up to ask me, look, bitch, you want, you know, but he said that my insides, like my fallopian tubes and my ovaries 
were so badly scarred and it had so much scar tissue on it from the endometrius that there was really nothing that he could do. If he would have left the one on the right, I would have been back less than a year in worse pain than I already was in. And he also said that after looking at your fallopian tubes and your ovaries and your reproductive organs, he said, I can totally understand why you were in so much pain and that you were sitting here in tears crying to me that day. He said, I can totally understand. He said, I don't even know how you made it that far with going through all the pain with the fibroids and the endometrius because the endometrius is what made it really bad for me. It made it worse. Like the fibroids, you know, just made my period heavy, but it wasn't the fibroids that was giving me the bad pain. Like it was already giving me pain, but it was giving me pain, but the endometrius was giving me the worst pain. So it's like two pains mixed together. And the endometrius is really what basically ended it for me. You know what I'm saying? That I had to have my ovaries and everything removed. So now I'm on a patch. I wear a patch every day for like, I think like 10 years, he said, for my hormones. So that way I don't go premenopause, you know, I don't go into perimenopause. I think that's what they call it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have hot flashes and shit like that, which I really don't want to have. So that is the reason why I wear a patch. And um, I have a clear patch on and I change it twice a week. And I just put it on the back, on my back, so that way you can't see it. I mean, you can put it wherever you want, but I would advise like anybody who is going to put on a patch for you to put it in an area that's not going to become like you don't perspire a lot. Like if you want, I wouldn't put it under like your boobs because you know it's hot sometimes and your boobs, you know, perspire. I would just put it on areas like, you know, shoulder blades, back or upper shoulder or arm. Somewhere where you know you're not going to peel it off in your sleep also because you do have to change them twice a week. And so I did notice like certain changes like because the first dosage of my patch was kind of low. And when I went to the doctors for my post um, checkup, I did get a higher dosage. So I, I was waking up at night with the sweats. If you hear anybody snoring, it's my dog. Okay. It's Pancake. I do have a new dog. It is a terrier. She's a terrier. And I got her a couple of days ago at the animal shelter. She is the terrier from Dorothy Toto. She's that terrier. So she's got a haircut. She's two, two years old. Her birthday is June 1st, bitch. Yes, two years old. Okay, birthday June 1st. She's a Gemini because I'm June 19th. So, yes, this is my girl right here. And she's so sweet. So, when we got her from the shelter, she was so quiet. She didn't say nothing. And she just jumps up on the couch. She stays beside me wherever I go. That's my baby. But anyway, so, um, I, um, you know, I came home. And I really thought that I was going to be able to do the things that I wanted to do. Let me tell you, I could barely walk for like a week and it had nothing to do with the pain. I did not know that surgery was so intense like that. Like I've never had surgery before. So that was really, really intense. And it took me a while to be able to walk, um, like about a week. Now I walk good, but, um, it hurts in my lower abdomen area. I don't have no scars, okay? I mean, like, I have a scar, but you really can't see it. I got glued, honey, okay? So, like, they stitched the inner layers of my stomach, and then the outer portion, he glued it. So, I was so happy that he glued it because, for one, you guys know I have keloids. So, I have keloid-prone skin, which is like this right here. And you guys know that I actually did have treatments and this was gone like okay like this actually was gone it was so flat you could barely see it about a little bit over a year ago but I got um what was it where well, I get the injections cortisone I think it's cortisone some shit like that shots and it went away it did go away but unfortunately with keloids um active hyperactive keloids they grow they grow back and even that stuff that i use that kelay cream ointment it doesn't work for keloids that grow that are hyperactive you know what i'm saying if you have a keloid a tropical keloid that doesn't a topical keloid that doesn't move it doesn't grow it just stays that size then it'll work for that. I, I do have those. And over years in time, those keloids go flat and then they disappear and you no longer see them. And I had a couple like that on my my legs and you don't see them. But hold on because somebody's at the door. Come on. We had to go check them out. Okay. Okay. 
So we got a package. I don't even know where it came from. It came from Hong Kong, but whatever. So I don't even remember what I was talking about because the mailman was taking forever to give me the damn package or use the machine. Oh, so anyway, I got glued and it came out really nice. Um, I'm pretty sure once it is like, you know how your skin still needs time to heal. I'm pretty sure that there will be a scar. I mean, like it itches somewhat, but it doesn't itch as bad. So, you know, it's just a little scar. Um, and I do end up having to take like medication and stuff or whatever just for the pain. But other than that. You know, it's been, you know, I'll just be sleeping or I rest. And I really do want to get back to me because I want to exercise. But other than that, you know, I'll be okay. So we're going to do real talk. It's real talk time. Um, I do have like three, but I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to do three real talks. I don't really know if I'm going to be able to do three, but we're going to see. So, if you have a real talk that you want me to do, you can always send an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, um, so that I know it's a real talk. And if you want to change the name of the people in the email that you're talking about, you know, you're spilling the tea, you can always let me know that you changed the names. If you don't, then 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to change the names for you. So, yeah, so let's get into this real talk. We're going to do the real talk right here in the living room because I just feel a lot more comfortable for right here for right now. And um, probably next next week will be my real talk back upstairs in my room. But it's just real talk, whatever. You know, this is like my first video recording in three weeks. So, Okay, so hopefully nobody disrupts me. Okay, yeah. Hi, April. I just recently came across your Real Talk video, and I love watching you. You give me some great. You give some great supportive advice. Before I tell you what has been going on in my life, here's something you might want to know about me. You can call me S. I live in New York. I'm 18 years old, and I'm currently in my last year of high school. About a month and a half ago, I met this guy in my school. We can call him Brandon. Brandon asked for my number, and he was cute, so I said, why not? Immediately, we started talking, texting, and hanging out 24-7. He was telling me all of the right things, and me being me, I fell for everything he was saying. Looking back now, everything was everything went way too fast. Long story short, we ended up having sex. <clears throat> However, let me just <laughs> let me just straighten up for this a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys can see me. Where am I? However, while we were active the first time around, we used protection, but it ended up breaking. He was a bit scared, but I told him not to worry because I was taking birth control. So we ended up having sex again, all in the same day with protection. Fast forward about a week and some days later, I had to go to the clinic. I go to the clinic every two or three months to get more birth control. I'm on the pills and to get tested. The doctor always says that if you get a call back, that it's a bad sign. However, if you get no call back, everything is everything. A week later, it was when it was a Wednesday. Hold on. Mm? Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so like I said, she said, immediately we started talking and texting and hanging out 24-7. He was telling me all the right things, and me being me, I fell for everything he was saying. Looking back now, everything went way too fast. Long story short, we ended up having sex. However, while we were active the first time around, we used protection, but it ended up breaking. He was a bit scared, but I told him not to worry because I take birth control. So we ended up having sex again, all in the same day with protection. Fast forward, about a week and some days later, I had to go to the clinic. I go every two or three months because I am on birth control pills and also to get tested. 
The doctor always tells me that if you get a call back from the clinic, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. However, if you don't get a call back, everything is everything. Everything is all good. A week later, it was a Wednesday, I got a call from the doctors saying that I need to come in because one of my STD tests came back positive. Being that I go to the doctors all of the time for pills and checkups, I was so confused and started panicking. The doctor told me not to worry because it was curable with just two pills. I honestly didn't care though. I was furious but stopped everything that I was doing to go to the doctors. I never felt so humiliated and embarrassed in my life. The rest of my day was pretty much ruined, but then I started to question myself about how, why things came to be. The last time I was at the doctor's and my tests were all negative was in July. However, it wasn't until after I had sex with Brandon and went to the clinic that I had a positive result. Brandon, you know, the one that she just started texting. I then started to think and remembered that in September, my longtime on and off boyfriend We can call him Don, and I had sex. We were on and off for three years, which in the second year, I stopped speaking to him. Our relationship was always all over the place, so we decided that it would be best just to stay friends and work up to something. However, we were still having sex. He was the only person I had ever had sex with out protection. Although Don, my on again, off again boyfriend, had crossed my mind with this whole chlamydia scare, In a way, I felt as though it couldn't have been him who infected me, only because I started my birth control pills, getting tested, then when we first met, and my my tests were always negative. Every time I had sex with Don, my tests always came back negative. He used to tell me, he used to tell me how he had doctor appointments and everything was fine. Talking about her ex. Now listen, April, I know you're probably thinking, why didn't I call Brandon? or even Don, as soon as I found out the bad news. I just told them straight up, and just tell them straight up. I know I'm wrong for that, but like I said before, I was embarrassed, humiliated, confused, and honestly felt gross in my body. In addition, I didn't want to be blamed for something I know I wasn't responsible for. I know it's never good to play detective, but that night when I got home, I called Don, my on again, off again, and pretty much told him that I haven't been feeling well and that I'm scared. He began to ask me if I was pregnant, and I was like, no, but something's definitely up. Being that him and I are just friends now, we haven't been active since September, and him knowing that I was talking to someone new, which is Brandon, was like, well, I know you've been active with someone else. I pretty much was just like, yes. And I've been, I have been, but you're the only one that I've been active with out protection. Don understood and he believed me. He told me that things sounded weird only because he went to the doctors after we had had sex and everything was fine. But how he would go to the doctor again and get another checkup just to make sure and that I should do the same. I told him that I agreed and I told him that it's important that we're honest with one another. He was basically just telling me that, of course, he would be honest because if he was in my shoes, he would want to know as well. I later on told my girlfriend everything and she was like, she doesn't think it's Don, my on again, off again, only because he was so willing to go to the doctors and he didn't really give me any weird feelings or bad vibes or signs. So I called Brandon, you know, the one that I just started texting and stuff. I pretty much told Brandon on the the same thing. But he was angry. So she never really told them that she had chlamydia, you guys. She just said she started feeling weird. She didn't tell them about an STD, I think. I can understand why he was angry, though. I told him that we needed to talk face-to-face about a serious topic, and he was getting upset because he felt like that if it was that serious, I should just say it then and that very, I should just say it then and at that very moment, like on the phone. So like I said before, I told him everything I told Don. He was somewhat defensive because he felt as though things weren't adding up. We argued back and forth until I hung up on him. The next day, Don, excuse me, the next day, Brandon texted me and told me that I needed to take a pregnancy test. Ah, I told him that I took several and they were all negative. So now I needed to take another test, a different test. 
I also told him that he needs to go to the doctors as well. I called Brandon and told him about how my STD test came out positive. Again, he was annoyed with me because I was beating around the bush, but I was honestly scared and still confused as fuck. It literally took me 40 minutes to come out and tell him what was happening, but what was getting me annoyed was that I kept saying my pregnancy test was negative, so in my head I'm thinking, why the fuck doesn't he get and understand what I'm trying to tell him? Why doesn't he get what's really going on? He began to argue. We began to argue. And he told me a lot of hurtful things. He told me that I wasn't his girl. He was going to block me once this whole situation was over. And how I need to stop blowing his phone up. I told him that I was honestly confused as to how and why I got the STD in the first place. Being that he was the last person I had sex with since my last STD test. Again, I know that this is a lie, but based off of his behavior and Don's behavior, I feel like it has nothing to do with Don, but a lot to do with Brandon. He told me that he has never, this is, has never happened to him and that the last test he took was in September, which if I can remember before this whole situation was ever a problem, he told me he rarely goes to the doctor. He kept yelling at me, asking me what the big deal was and why was I crying, being that I already took medication to cure everything. I told him that he needed to stop yelling at me because there's other ways that I could have handled the situation and I knew I had to tell him. My doctor basically printed me an anonymous letter along with pills for him and told me that I could just leave it at his front door. But I told him that he never crossed my mind once being, <clears throat> but I told him that that never crossed my mind once being that this is a very serious matter and it has to do with him and me. He told me he didn't want any of the pills that I had and that he would handle his part on his own time. I don't know why, but since I found out I was infected, I automatically blamed myself knowing that I can't get an STD on my own. What? I automatically, I don't know why, but since I found out I was infected, I automatically blamed myself knowing that I can't, that I cannot get an STD on my own. With the way Brandon's acting, there's no telling that he's going to tell me the truth about his results. My friend told me that she's pretty sure it's him only because if it wasn't him and he was clean before we did anything, and now that I'm telling him my test came up positive, he felt like I really gave it to him so he wouldn't have been so calm or passive. In any way, in a way, it's true. He was more upset with the fact that it, it took me 40 plus minutes to tell him what was going on um, and that I had an STD and that it was curable and that it was already taken care of. I keep thinking, what if Brandon isn't infected? I don't know what to do anymore. And I can't stop blaming myself. I haven't been eating but crying 24-7 and I've been telling my mom I don't feel well just so I can avoid going to school. I feel gross and uncomfortable in my own skin. I know that STDs are common and I'm thankful that the STD I got was curable, but I'll never view myself the same way. I also know that the way I handled the situation by telling white lies was completely wrong, but I don't know. <clears throat> Brandon told me he has gone to the doctor prior to our dealings. However, people don't realize nowadays you must ask for an STD test. Otherwise, you won't necessarily get one. I'm honestly not sure that he has gotten tested before being that he never brought up any comments specifically about results, but just about going to the doctor. Thank you, April, for your time. And I'm sorry if it's so long. So her name is S. She's 18. So S is 18 with chlamydia, okay? Well, she had chlamydia. She don't have it no more. However, she met some cute boy, and his name is Brandon. She, you know, he asked for her number. She was like, looked at him, was like, oh, why not? You know what I'm saying? They started texting, hanging out 24-7. One thing led to another. She even admitted to the fact that, oh, he was telling me things that I wanted to hear, and it was sounding real good, and that's how he got in her pants. They had sex. Condom broke. They still kept doing it again that day because she's on the pill. She said they had protective sex. I don't really know. It kind of was confusing me at that one point. But she also thought back to September where she had sex with her. I don't know if he's on again, off again, because they're just friends. So we're going to say her friends with benefits 
ex-boyfriend. His name is Don. And, she, and now she only has sex with Don without a condom. So basically, she went to the doctor's office to get her birth control pills. And while getting her birth control pills, she was retested for STDs. <clears throat> and this time around, it came up positive for chlamydia. Now, she tells Don, and Don is real, you know, calm about it. He's cool, you know, he's not bitching, he's not complaining, he's not going off, he's not cursing around. But then when she tells, you know, Brandon, you know, she's kind of like beating around the bush about things. Now, mind you, when she's trying to tell Brandon, he's kind of aggressive about the situation because he wants to know right then and there. You know what? I get that. When you, if you, if you was to tell me, like to say to me, April, I need to talk to you, it's real important. If you need to talk to me, bitch, we're going to talk right now on the phone. I'm not going to wait for you to come over. I'm not going to wait to see you tomorrow. I'm not going to wait to see you in person next week. If it's really that important, then I want to know now. Never tell somebody you need to talk to them about something or I want something to tell you and, and then you don't tell them. Because if you tell somebody, yo, I got something to tell you. We need to have a serious talk. The person's going to be like, well, about what? Well, about what? Ain't nobody about to go for, oh, I'm going to tell you. I'll talk to you about it later. Or I'll talk to you about it next week. Like. You're going to be sitting there at the top of your head. In your mind, you're going to be like, what the fuck does this bitch got to talk to me about? What is so important that I got to wait till next fucking week? But it was important enough to mention it. But now, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to have a chit chat about the shit? Like, I hate when people do that shit to me. Like, don't tell me you want to talk to me about something. And then you be like, oh, I'll tell you later. Like, my husband does that. He did that to me about something like a few weeks ago. He's like, oh, I got to tell you something. Or just something he said somewhat in that category. And I was like, what, what? Oh, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Like, I hate when people do that to me. And then I'm still standing there asking you what it is, what it is. And you're like, I'll tell you later. That shit annoys me. So I can understand where Brandon, the new the new guy, whatever, how he felt. But when she finally did come out and tell him, he was aggressive. He was rude. He was mean. He was like, you ain't my girl. Stop blowing up my phone. When this is all done and with, over and done with, I'm not fucking with you. I don't need your pills. I'm going to handle this on my own time. Okay. First of all, who the fuck handles an STD on their own time? Like, I'm sorry. I don't know about y'all. But if I was to catch an STD, a bitch, I'm not about to handle it on my own time. By the time you handle the shit, you might not have no fucking, you know what I'm saying, private part. It's bad enough a bitch already lost her freaking reproductive organs inside. I'd be damned if I caught an STD. I am not about to try to lose my motherfucking cootie. I'm going to need something left. Let me catch. Let me have something, Okay. Who the fuck says I'm going to handle it on my own time? So then that makes me start speculating about, oh boy, was it you that gave it to her? Because if you gave me an STD, first of all, if you gave me an STD, I'm going to be real fucking pissed off. If you tell me that you got an STD and I didn't give it to you, but you telling me about it, I'm going to be real pissed off. Okay? I'm going to be real angry. You cannot fault anybody for being mad about you coming to them and saying, well, I got an STD, especially if they don't have one and they know they didn't have one. And they're positive they didn't have one. That's just basically telling me that, bitch, oh, so you got one and I didn't have one before fucking with you, but now I got one? Hold the fuck up. Wait up. That's not like, oh, I got a million dollars in the trunk of the car for you. You know what I'm saying? Or I got something for you. It's not like you giving them a gift. You giving them some some shit that it's a gift that they don't really want to receive. Okay? This is a gift that these motherfuckers really don't want to receive. Nobody wants an STD. Okay? But I, you know what? I could honestly say it's both of them. I could say it's Don, the on again, off again, who was so nice about it. And then I could say it was Brandon. I could say it was Don because the, the nice guy who was, who was real passive and smooth about it. I could say it was him because, nigga, you know your dick was dirty. You know you had a dirty ass dick, okay? You know that shit was filthy nasty, okay? That shit was filthy nasty, dirty dick ass nigga. And you was passive about it because you didn't want to put the spotlight on you. You had guilt in you. You know you was fucking me with a dirty dick, okay? So that's the reason why he could be real passive and nice about it because he know his dick was dirty he know he has something. And how you going to get mad that you know you has something and you pass that shit the fuck along? He just passed that shit the fuck along like we were sitting at the Thanksgiving day, the table. That nigga passed that shit along like we were sitting at the Thanksgiving table and we was passing fucking dinner rolls around, okay? That nigga passed that shit along, okay? However, 
Yeah, he might have been smooth and nice about the shit. That's probably because he the one that got the shit. Trust me, if you tell somebody that you got an STD and you telling that person that, that you think gave it to you, but they really didn't have it, that motherfucker is going to be pissed the fuck off. Come tell me you got an STD and I ain't got one. And now you telling me you got one? Bitch, I'm going to be real mad, okay? I might just motherfucking try to cut your ass, okay? You ain't got to worry about taking no pills, bitch. You better worry about taking the next motherfucking flight out of this motherfucker, okay? So I can understand where Brandon's anger issue is coming from. Don, on the other hand, he's so cool and smooth about it. Who the fuck be cool and smooth about catching an STD or even let alone might have an STD? Somebody who already got a motherfucking STD or had one and already got that shit fucking cured, okay? But was too embarrassed and humiliated to tell you, my friend. Now, if anybody should be embarrassed and humiliated to tell another person some, should be Don and you, not Brandon. Because Brandon don't really know you. Like he said, you ain't his girl. He could give two fucks, okay? But Don is the one who should really be embarrassed or humiliated. Because you and him have known one another for how long? Y'all was together for three years. On and off, whatever. Y'all been together for three years y'all are friends y'all confide in each other y'all having unprotected sex and shit like that so he should be embarrassed because you guys have a more closer bond than you do with the new guy brandon okay so yeah i would be embarrassed i, I would be embarrassed if it were me that has this close relationship with you we're really good friends and we just fuck when we want to unprotected and now here it is i didn't came around the corner with my dirty ass dick and gave you chlamydia. I would be really embarrassed because I know you. We're close. We have something. We shared something. Okay. Now here it is. You got the new dude who used the condom. It might have broke, but you did say y'all was having sex more and more again that day. But you said protective. So what makes you think that it's Brandon, the new guy? Yeah, he. I would get mad too. And if it were me. And I didn't have no fucking chlamydia. And then you you gave it to me. I'll be real pissed. And you damn right. I won't want your motherfucking pills. I'm going to go on my own time. I'm going to tell you whatever the fuck I want to tell you. Just so you can get the fuck out of my face. And get the fuck off my goddamn phone line. Okay. Stop blowing up my phone. So in all honesty. That's you know what I'm saying. In all honesty. I really truly believe like. This is just me. And I could be wrong. But in my feelings. I really feel like the culprit, the dirty dick motherfucker is Don. You're on again, off again. Only because he was too calm about that shit. That nigga was like calm as a motherfucker. It was like you just told him like, yo, I don't know what you could tell somebody that can make them really calm, like a surprise. But that's a surprise. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck how cool we are, how close we are. I don't give a fuck if we have the best relationship. You tell me you gave me something, I'm fucking flying your head, okay? However, if I already know that I'm a dirty motherfucker and I got a dirty ass dick and I'm spreading the news, okay? Spreading the motherfucking news around and I'm trying to keep that on a hush hush on a low. I'm not about to tell you. I'm, I'm going to be calm and cool about it. I'm going to be real calm and cool. I can't blame Don. I'm, listen, let me tell you something. I don't know about y'all ladies, but who do y'all think spread the news around? Who the fuck y'all think spread the dinner rolls around the fucking table? Because honestly, if it were me, I'd be pissed the fuck off. Now, you might think that it's Brandon or like, like S said, she calls herself S. Like S said, her and her friend are conspiring that it's probably Brandon, the new guy, because of his reaction. And because he told her that he's been to the doctor before. He didn't tell her what he went to the doctor for. But that's not your business. Because like he said, you're not his girl. And honestly, it's like you was a jump off. Not to try to diss you, but you're not his girl. So why should he have to explain everything to you of why he went to the doctors? That's not your business. Okay? That's not your business. However... You can't really go off of his reactions because his reactions are aggressive or they're abrupt or he's telling you, you not his girl. Stop blowing up his phone line after this. He not fucking with you. Don't leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? You can't go off of his actions because both men's actions are total opposite. Okay. Some people could be calm about a situation like this and take it as, okay, you know what? I'll just go take the pill. No big thing. People's attitudes and personalities all differ. So you can't really go off of a reaction, okay? And then another person can be like, oh, you know, you gave me a what? Oh, you might have gave me a what? Oh, 
All right, bitch. Don't let me catch your ass outside. I'm one of those people like, you gave me a what? Did you did you say you just gave me a chlamydia? What? A, a, a clam? A what? A, a clam Lydia? What, what the fuck? Now, I know when I put those two motherfucking words together, that means chlamydia, bitch. That means like a dirty dick STD disease, okay? Dirty dick disease, okay? That's what the fuck it means. So you telling me that you stuck your dick up in somebody and then brought your dirty ass dick over here and stuck it up in me and gave me some dirty dick disease? Like, are you serious right now? Nigga, I'm about to fuck you up. <clears throat> That's how I would take it. But then we do have those people who's like, oh, well, it's okay because I've had... It's okay. But in the back of their mind, they're like, well, it's okay. I already had an STD before. So I'll just get rid of this one the same way I did the other one. Or it could be, oh, you you got an STD? Oh, well, I can get tested again. No worries. I'll tell you how it goes. But in their head, they going, yeah, bitch, I know you got a chlamydia because I already had the shit and I got cured. I just didn't want to tell you because I'm embarrassed and humiliated. And then you got the other nigga who's like, Oh, you trying to say that I gave you an STD? Bitch, I ain't give you shit. You ain't my girl. Fuck you. Don't call my phone. Stop blowing on my phone. Get the fuck out of here, scallywag. Blah, 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 blah. And in his mind, he going, yeah, bitch, I know I gave you an STD. So what? I'm a dirty dick nigga. I'm a dirty dick nigga. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It could play its part for both. But if you really asking me, honestly, <laughs> bitch, you get an STD from what? Without using the condom. You don't use a condom with Don. That's your on again, off again. He ain't your man. He's your friend with benefits, okay? He's your friend. He's not committed to you. How you know he ain't fucking Sally next door, Tina down the street, Mary Lou around the corner, Babette upstairs? I mean, like, I could just go on. Keisha next, like, three blocks away, get on a train, hop on the bus. You know what I'm saying? You got Key Lolo over there. How you know he's not messing with all these girls? You seen him in September. Okay, you don't know who he's seen in August, July, June. It's the summertime. Bitches really getting thirsty in the summertime, and they wear less. And they could probably have his dirty dick in every last one of them. You don't know that. Just because he's not aggressive and he's cool with you does not mean that y'all didn't have anything. And just because you feel like you can tell him whatever and y'all have good conversations does not mean that he feels the same way. And if he does tell you, yes, we have good conversations, and you can tell me anything, and I won't keep any secrets from you, and I'm going to tell you the truth, does not mean that the nigga's going to do that. Just like Brandon told you what the fuck you wanted to hear. And they got your legs spread wide the fucking open like a bald eagle flying up in the sky and got you in the bed is the sa- by telling you what the fuck you want to hear is the same thing that Don did, okay? And he just was real smooth about it because his ass was embarrassed and humiliated because he didn't want you to know that the nigga's dick is dirty and that he's fucking and he's fucking other bitches without condoms just as well as how he's fucking you without a condom. So that's just my opinion. Not to make you feel bad, but let me tell you something, sweetheart. <clears throat> your relationship with Don didn't work out because it didn't work out because he wasn't a good boyfriend and etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why y'all just fuck okay y'all are friends with benefits now let me tell you something just because you're friends with benefits does not mean that he don't have to put a cover on that shit and cover it the fuck up okay let me tell you that he's not your man he can fuck whoever the fuck he wants to just like he can fuck you whenever he wants to because y'all are friends with benefits now here we come into brandon yes men do tell you what the fuck you want to hear just as well as bitches tell you what the fuck you want to hear when you want to hear it i hate when people tell me what the fuck you think i want to hear don't tell me what the fuck you think i want to hear because i'll tell you what the fuck i'm gonna tell you and i don't give a fuck if you want to hear it the fuck or not bottom line now here we go with brandon yeah you just met him you got the number you thought he was cute you got his phone number who is this at my door oh another package so anyway yeah my perspective is i don't really think brandon did it all right i don't really know you said you had a condom on i wasn't there thank god okay when the dinner rolls is being passed around i bitch don't want to be anywhere in town okay However, don't put it past your boy Don, okay? That's why y'all relationship didn't work out the way it did. Because if he was so trustable and he was such a great boyfriend, then trust me, bitch, you'd be with him today. Y'all would be happy. Your ass wouldn't be catching no STDs. But let me tell you something about an STD. Listen, if he's an on again, off again, and he's not your man, man, and you ain't been married to him, you ain't been... Put on a condom, okay? Don't feel... Sorry about that. My battery died. So I had to get another one. So like I was saying, 
okay, you have an STD, you got a, you got, you have an STD, you got it cured, you got it fixed. Be happy that it was something that was curable. Now here's the downfall in your eyes. You feel disgusted, you feel dirty, you feel humiliated, you feel embarrassed, okay? First of all, let's not feel disgusted about our bodies because an STD is not the best thing in the world, but at least it's not something like AIDS or something that you just can't get rid of, okay? At least you know it's something curable. And you take it as a life lesson, okay? A lot of things you have to take it as a life lesson. Not saying that, oh, it's okay, girl, but take it as it's okay, girl. It's a life lesson. You're curable. You know better for next time. That's how it goes. Trust and believe, bitch. You're not the only bitch who had chlamydia before, and you're not going to be the last. I'm pretty sure that there's somebody watching who's had this shit before or whatever other kind of STD there is. I mean, I'm not going to think about them. What is this? Uh, chlamydia, gonorrhea, <clears throat> herpes, syphilis, crabs. Um, I don't know. There's probably some new ones that I don't even know about because there's always some new shit popping up. But listen, it's a life lesson. It's a life lesson. That's what they make doctor's offices for. That's what they make medication and antibiotics for. And also know this, regardless of who gave it to you, and if they want to take care of shit on their own time, or they don't want to be honest to you, all you need to worry about is yourself. That's who you need to worry about. You've already went ahead and you've spoken to these gentlemen about it. And quite frankly, you're never really going to know who gave you the shit. I'm just saying, in my opinion that it was your on again off again yeah he was calm about the shit don't you think sometimes that people are calm just because you 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 know what i'm saying you telling them some bad news about some fucking venereal disease don't think that they obviously going to be angry about it there are those who are calm and also know how to handle the situation also let me point out the fact that when you did go to your on again off again boyfriend don he did point to you the fact, he did say to you, well, I do know that you've been sleeping with somebody else. He was so quick to point the finger at the other dude. Why would you do that? Why would you even bring up old dude in the conversation? Take care of your part. Take care of you. Worry about you. Why is he bringing up old dude? Oh, I do know that you was messing around. You was fucking with somebody else. That right there is like, hmm, suspect to me. I mean, I could be wrong, but... People have all types of ways of scamming and scheming and conniving others. So don't think just because he's so calm that he ain't did shit, he ain't had shit, he ain't got shit. Trust me, you and your little girlfriend, take it from me. Motherfuckers be calm. The motherfuckers be real calm when they're about to kill your ass. And you think they all good and shit. And then next thing you know, you got a knife in your back and you crawling for help, okay? Motherfuckers be real calm with that shit. Motherfuckers be real calm when they go into school and then they shoot that motherfucking school up, okay? They be real calm with that shit. You never know what hits you. So don't don't sleep on people that's calm. Motherfuckers that are quiet are the worst ones, okay? Quiet is kept. They can be the worst ones. So in my opinion, if Don and Brandon went and got fixed or going to fix it on their own time, just let them. Let them. But this is what I will tell you. Don't fuck with neither one of them no more, sweetheart. Why would you need to be with an on-again, off-again boyfriend? Find you someone that's quality and that's worth your time to, that you can have sex with without a condom. You know what I'm saying? That you can share intimate moments with. Don't be sharing your intimate moments with your, your bejeweled, bedazzled area with some nigga that's on-again, off-again. Like, fuck that. He ain't worth laying up there catching nothing. Fuck that. He's not worth it. Because if he was, he wouldn't be on-again, off-again. He would be more than your friend. He would be your man. Y'all still be in a relationship. And if he ain't worth keeping as a boyfriend, then let him be your friend and not with benefits, okay? Nigga, if you need some benefits, take your ass to the social services building and get you some Medicaid or some food stamps or something. But you're not going to be having no benefits over here, okay? i just say this. I wouldn't fuck with neither one of them because, quite frankly, you don't know who gave it to you. And even if Brandon didn't give you the disease... He kind of a little bit kind of like rude on the rough side. I get it. He was mad and upset. But damn, some things you don't have to say to a person regardless of what. And if you could say this to me during that, I can only imagine how you're going to treat me later on down the road. If you could tell me that I'm not your girl, keep that in your mind. I ain't your, you ain't my girl. All right, nigga. All right, ain't your girl. Oh, okay. Watch. Bet. I'm telling you. I wouldn't fuck with neither one of them. Neither one of them are not worth your time, sweetheart, or your sanity, or your health, or your well-being. Like, for real, 
neither one of them are. Tell your girlfriend what I said and see what she say about the situation. Y'all can go ahead and give her some advice down below. Who do you think it was? What do y'all think of the whole situation? But we're going to move on to the next. Okay. All right, you guys. So this one is a little bit different. Okay. Well, it's the same. Hey, April, I've been living for, I've been living for your videos ever since the fabulous Super Mango drawstring review. I even loved when you drove over the spice wig. Hilarious. So back in the days, I did dry, drive over a wig because the thing just kept swelling up all day long. And by the time the end of the day came, and it wasn't even that end of the day, end of the day. It had to be like 4 o'clock. It was still light outside. So it might have been 3. That damn thing had just like evolved into like this humongous chia pet. It like really grew and just kept swelling and swelling and swelling. And you know how you walk around and you think you're looking so cute? You know what I'm saying? You think you're cute until you get into like a mirror and then you're like, oh my God, did I have that in my teeth? Or did I have that in my nose? Or like, are you serious right now? Was my track showing all this time? Or like, are you really fucking kidding me? I look like a French poodle right now. Why do I look like a cotton ball? Why Why do I look like a cotton ball? So this is how I was like thinking all day. I was so cute. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking. I was knowing I was. All right. And then when I got home, um, yeah, that wig was not what's up. So I got really upset. That was just the one time I wore it. And it just, it just evolved. It kept growing all day long. So it was like, was I supposed to do? I just ran it over. I had to kill it. It was going to keep growing. You know what I'm saying? When you, you, I had to kill it. I had to kill it. So, so I have a question to ask. I noticed that you have very meaningful tattoos, you know, very meaningful tattoos. Like every last one of my tattoos means something. So I thought you'd be the perfect person to ask. I will call myself Candy and my boyfriend, John. Candy, why you had to pick the name John? Like, seriously, if you knew they were so fucking meaningful, then you wouldn't have picked that one because that's my husband's name, okay? Bitch, you could have chose anything else but that. But anyway, we'll use it. Okay, John and I have been together for a year and a month. When we met, I mentioned I, mentioned I prefer guys with a clean haircut, pants pulled up, and no tattoos, which all applied to him at this time. So meaning he had a fresh, clean haircut, his pants weren't sagging, and he ain't had no tattoos. But that may be a couple small ones are fine, small tattoos. Well, he mentioned then wanting two tattoos. I thought this was fine since he wanted one to match with his sisters. Now, over a year later, he went to get his first tattoo without telling me. I found out on his Snapchat story with everyone else. April, I was shocked since I had spoken to him earlier that day. I felt left out. Now he's mentioning a full sleeve. Our communication has been way off for a few weeks now, and I don't know what to do. I don't want to break up because I moved all the way out to California and then met him and fell for him. A few months ago, I figured my financial school career and housing status just wasn't working here anymore, and I wanted to go home to Florida. I have no family or friends here, but I stayed to make it work for us. I offered to end the relationship because I don't want to force him to not get what he wants. But tell me, April, am I being selfish or should I just let the tattoos thing go? I don't judge people who have tattoos. I've just always been more attracted to men who don't have a lot of them. I don't have any tattoos or piercings myself. You don't even have to do a real talk video on this if you don't want to. Um, but if you can get around to it, um, or reply, that would be so appreciated. Candy. Oh, and I forgot I should pick, probably put a picture insert. So I do have a picture and it's of her and she is very pretty. Okay. There is no guy in the picture with her. Unfortunately, I can't see what he looks like, but she is very pretty. She's like a milk chocolate brown. Okay. Like one of those little candy drops. She's really pretty. And I like her dreads. I'm not sure if they're real or faux dreads. But either or, I love them all. I really like the full dreads a lot, the most. Um, because then you could just put them in. You don't have to grow them out, you know. But I like all the dreads. But she looks really pretty. And um, so basically, a candy. She looks like a little chocolate drop candy, see? Candy is, you know, she attracted to men who don't have tattoos. You know, they got to be clean haircut, clean cut, no sagging ass pants, and no tattoos. So here's the thing. I can go with you in the first one. 
Yes, clean haircut. Because if you got a dirty ass haircut, you looking all scruffy, then you look like a hobo. You look homeless. Nigga, I don't want fucks with you. Look like I'm going to put in too much work. And pants sagging. Yes, please put your pants the fuck up because grow the fuck up. Your pants have a waist and they need to be on your waist. I cannot stand to see when males, men, or women have their pants sagging off their ass. That is so unattractive. It's so tacky. And even though I'm not attracted to you, it's a turn off for anybody. Just looking at you, you look like a slob. When did we make showing our underwears a fucking trend? Like, serious. I mean, they have made it that way, but why the fuck would you want to walk around like a penguin all fucking day long trying to keep your pants up on your hips like you got on a motherfucking hula hoop and you're doing the fucking Liberace and shit. Like, seriously, why the fuck would you want to walk around like that? I'm so thankful, so goddamn thankful that neither, neither one of my sons ever was into that fucking pants under your ass cheek trend. So tacky. And if they were, they didn't do that shit around me. But I know them better than that. They they are always blasting people for wearing their pants half their, off their ass. And what's so sad about it is that shit is like mad old. That shit was like years and years and years ago. Like seriously. And y'all are still doing that. Now it's so bad till they got men are wearing skinny jeans hanging off their ass. First of all, they're skinny jeans. They're tight. How the fuck are you having a pair of tight ass skinny jeans off your ass? Like, let's not do this, okay? Men, please. Boys, men, whoever. Your jeans come with a waist, which means they need to be on your waist, at your waist level. They're not under the butt jeans. They're not called under your ass crack jeans. They sit on your waist. It's not attractive. It's not stylish. It's not trending. And if you think it's trending now, then you're dead ass wrong. You guys, you young people always trying to bring some shit back. Please don't bring that the fuck back. Please don't. I'm tired of seeing fucking people walking around like penguins because they can't walk properly because their crotch of their pants is already at their fucking knees. Okay? Or their waist is at the knees. How do niggas run? What if somebody was chasing you like the cops? Or just somebody in general that was like a crazy person out of nowhere. How the fuck? I bet you pull your motherfucking pants up then. They will hike them shits up real quick on the side. They don't even wear belts with them. They just look they just look stupid. Okay? So, Candy likes men who don't have their pants down to their, you know, sagging. And she also likes them to have no tattoos. I get it. That's your preference. You know what I'm saying? That's your preference. All three of your preference. Now, here's the thing. Y'all have only been together a year and like a couple of months, and he's gotten a tattoo. You said he went and got a tattoo without telling you. Then, and now he's talking about having, having a whole entire sleeve. Now, yes, my tattoos are very meaningful to me. They mean something. Each and every last one of them means something to me. However, it's my body, and if I want to tattoo the whole motherfucking thing, I'm going to do that. I don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks. Should he take you into consideration or take your feelings into consideration? I can say yes and I can say no to this. I'm going to say yes because everybody's feelings could be should be considered in a relationship. If you want to be with somebody and you take them very seriously, of course your feelings should be considered. Of course, you know, we should talk about things. You did say, she did say their communication is kind of like has been off for a while and hasn't been the same. Okay, I understand that to the toll. I've been there before in many times and situations. And you always want to have a really good relationship with somebody. Now, as far as him kind of like getting your okay, getting your approval for getting a tattoo after you guys have only been again together a year, I can't really say that I can go for that. Because me personally, let's let's just say that I wasn't with my husband and I was with some some other some other some somebody else, okay? For the same amount of time frame that you was with your boyfriend, your boyfriend, John, okay? And I wanted to get a tattoo, but he doesn't like girls with tattoos or whatever. I don't really give two fucks because, or I'm, 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 here's the thing. I don't really need your approval to get a tattoo because we've only been together for a year. 
you're not really like my, you're not my husband. We're not engaged. Okay. We are still establishing a relationship with one another because we're still getting to know one another. We're still getting to know what each other likes. Your representative probably just came out the closet along with his representative might have just came out the closet. Meaning representative is the person that you use as a facade when you first get with somebody and you can use them for a month, two months, a week, three months, four months, five months, six months, a year, a few years. Sometimes some people use their representative for a lifetime of marriage and then the nigga don't tell you he gay until 20 years later and you don't have kids with him and everything and the whole nine, you're like, wait a minute, you're gay? We've been married for 20 years and we got kids together. Oh, babe, I've been married. I've been gay all my life. I just didn't want to come out the closet and tell nobody. I, I just didn't know how to tell you. That means he's been living with that representative for 20 motherfucking years up in your face, bitch, and you didn't know about it, okay? So, a year is not really a long time at all for a relationship, and it damn sure isn't a, a long enough time to me, in my eyes, to get the approval and um, the yes to go, the green light, to get a tattoo on my skin. I'm just saying, that's just my perspective of it. I don't feel like, did you just pass gas, girl? She's a little stinky dog. Um, I just feel like I'm I'm not about to get approval from anybody for a tattoo, especially after a year. But, you know, you are entitled to how you feel. You are entitled to feel about what you're attracted to. But I, I would say this. If you if you cannot really say, I don't judge people and then say, well, you know, the tattoo thing. A lot of times people put too much emphasis on body, body, I don't know modifications or destruction okay some people do they feel like my mom always felt like she would always tell me don't get too many tattoos don't get no more tattoos because you'll never get a job which was so not true because I was a senior VP for marketing in the healthcare field for 11 years and my clients actually loved my tattoos and I you know I went happily outside with my tattoos showing you know what I'm saying that's me this is me however there are some people who look at others that have tattoos as we're in a gang, we're not good people, we're troublemakers, or et cetera, et cetera. Hey, girl. Um, and things like that. Really can't judge someone because they have body art on them or piercings. It's just a way to express yourself. You know what I'm saying? This is a way to express yourself. You can have somebody that has no tattoos, who is clean cut, bearded, non saggy pants, you know what I'm saying? He just he looks like a professional, okay? We going to say it like that, a professional, all right? Like for professional, the nigga look like a professional. And at the end of the night, you know, he a professional during the daytime and stuff. And at the nighttime, the nigga is a murderer or a rapist or anything else. He could be all of those things, you know what I'm saying? You never know. What do you want? What? What? Okay. You never, never know. So, and he, he could be clean cut whistle and don't have no tattoos at all. Okay. So you never should judge a book by its cover. Okay. Cause look, when I went and got her from the shelter, they was like, well, we really don't know about her. She's just quiet and she doesn't really talk to nobody. She just got here a couple of days ago and she just sits in the corner. But she is the most loving thing in the fucking world, all right? All she wants to do is get her belly rubbed. She's attached to me like she's another hip of mine. And I say I can't have no more kids because I can't, but I think I just did, okay? So that, you know, it's your preference. You can never judge a book by its cover. You, you really, really can't judge a book by its cover. Just because he's clean cut and he has no tattoos does not mean he's the best person in the world, okay? Or that his pants ain't sagging down on him. Now, you don't like tattoos. I'm not really sure what it is you don't like about him. But honey, a sleeve, a sleeve is nothing. I'm almost got a sleeve. I'm almost done. It's nothing. It's art. That does not make him any different than the next person. You can get with a dude who don't got no tattoos and he could be a true asshole to you. But is this dude an asshole to you? I don't know. You feel like your communication is not that great probably because you're finding out that he got a tattoo. Maybe on Snapchat and shit like that. Maybe certain things that you're finding out about through social media is things that you don't approve of. So what other way can he come to you and say anything? But just go ahead and do it. Like Nike says, just do it. Fuck it. Just do it. Why am I going to tell Candy for? She don't like him. And if you already offered to break up in the relationship, he didn't. you didn't say anywhere in that email that he said, oh, yeah, we're going to break the fuck up. 
Obviously, he likes you and he wants to be around you. But if you are saying that your communication is lacking and you also want to go back home, sweetheart, don't use what you want to do as an excuse to push him off. If you don't like men with tattoos and you don't want to be in Cali no more because you can't afford it and you ain't got no family or friends there, then by all means, take your ass back home. Don't feel like you forced to be in a relationship with him if that's not what you want, okay? That's just my opinion. Me personally, I love my tattoos and I'm gonna get more of them. I don't give a really I don't really give a hoo-ha hoorah what anybody think of me. Okay. I don't really judge people by what they got. Listen, first of all, one thing is this. We all are attracted to some things. The one thing that I would never I just don't think that it's appropriate and I just don't find it attractive at all is the gauges in the ears because you're stretching your earlobes all the way down here. I your earlobes be looking like this. Their earlobes be looking like this. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't you know I don't I don't find that to be attractive. And when you're done wearing the gauges and you don't want to wear them anymore, there is no way your skin is about to pop back up. You have to get your ear cut. And I'm not really into getting my skin cut the fuck off. But then it's the same thing with the tattoo. I just say this, okay? And this is just my opinion. If your communication with old dude is not that great and you want to go back home, then don't use his body modifications as an excuse to get out of the relationship. Just be honest with yourself and just say, hey, you know what? It didn't work out. I really want to go back home. And do you, sweetheart. Just do it. But as far as, you know what I'm saying, him not talking to you about him getting tattoos. I don't really think that he needs to do that because he's a grown ass man and y'all have only been together for a year. And in all time and in all reality, even if y'all was together more than a year, you cannot tell him that he cannot get up a tattoo. Let me say this people. And I know this for a fact, if you never had a tattoo ever in your life, if you never, if you never had a tattoo and then you get one, you know, you never had one and then you go on to get one. You just be like, oh, I'm going to just get one tattoo. I only want one because I've, I've been a strong believer and I'm never going to have no tattoos. And then when I did finally get one, I was like, oh, I'm only going to get the one. But then you go and you get the second one. And then after that, it's like you addicted. That's all you want to do is get tattoos. Not not that it's all you want to do, but it's an addiction and it's not really an addiction. It's like you started something and it's sitting there alone because it's just the one tattoo and you want to kind of like group it together. So you just continuously, continuously get more tattoos. Trust me and believe me when I tell you I had no intentions. Okay. Like when I say I had no intentions on walking around looking like, like this all my life. Okay. Like, tattooed up. I, I really, really didn't have intentions and a, quite a few of them are co have been covered up. Okay. Um, look, all right. I had no intentions on having all these tattoos. Never thought about it, but I like them. And it's just a way for me to express myself. And it's not even a way for me to express myself because I can care less about how I fucking express myself <laughs> as long as it's in a positive way. But this is something that I like. This is what I like to do. And I, I really can't tell you why. Why do I like to sit there and get poked with a bunch of needles at the time and spend my money on shit like this? But this is just what I like. And like like you said, you can't judge people. Tattoos are like a trending thing now. Like normally back in a long time ago, you didn't see so many people tattooed up as you do now. You know, both of my sons are tattooed. Uh, my oldest, my eldest son, Jerron, who is 26 years old. Now, this nigga get a tattoo every week. For real, for real. He get a tattoo every fucking week. And I'm exaggerating, but the nigga is tattooed the fuck up, all right? Like, when I say he's tattooed up, he has more than me. And he started, of course, way after me. But he's tattooed the fuck up. <laughs> And I respect him for that because that's what the fuck he wants to do with himself. I'm trying to get a picture of his tattoos to show you guys. Um, and I don't find anything wrong with it. I love it. He's got them all on his hands. He's got his neck. He's I think he's got one on his eye. I'm not really sure. But he's tattooed up. And it looks good on him. You know what I'm saying? It looks good on him. And I appreciate it. Um, and I, you know, I appreciate the work that he's put into getting his tattoos, but if that's not, if that's something that you yourself are really not attracted to, then 
you know, don't try to make him feel any lesser than a person by, you know, saying things like, well, you didn't tell me about it or we didn't have a conversation or a talk about it. You didn't say anything to me about tattoo, you know. <laughs> Y'all have only been together for a year. And like I said, a year is not a long time at all. It really, really isn't. A lot of people feel fail to realize. They, they feel like being in a relationship for a year means like y'all are damn near married. It's a fucking year. Time goes by so quick in a year. And like I just said, you have to get to know the person, okay? Once you get to know the person and a real representative come out and show you who the fuck they are, then you can honestly say, okay, yeah, I know this nigga. And then sometimes you still can't even say, yeah, I know this nigga. We've been together for a year. He ain't going to do me dirty. He ain't going to do no shit like that to me. You can't really say that until, you know what I'm saying? You really get to know the person. And even if they have shown you their representative, that still don't mean like you really got to know them. Listen. I'm going to just say this. Tattoos don't make you better, don't make you any less of a person. However, if you're not finding interest in the person anymore and your ways of communication have fell off and you're finding disinterest in him and he's finding disinterest in you and you feel like, you know, there's really nothing to, you know, talk about or speak about, or you feel like he's doing things behind your back, then by all means, that 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 means it's time to just, you know, walk away from the relationship. And if you can easily walk away from the relationship by calling things off and letting him know, well, you know, I tried to end it and I offered. How does one person offer to end a relationship? Well, I offered to end a relationship. You don't offer that shit, bitch. You, it, it, listen, if somebody came to me and was like, well, I'm offering to break up with you. Well, you want to break up? Because if you want, we could break up. If you ask me that shit, we're going to break the fuck up. Okay? Because why the fuck I want to be with you? There's a reason why you came to me and asked me that shit. There's a reason why you said that shit to me. It's either you don't want to break up with me, but you really do want to break up with me, but you don't want to be the bad breaker upper. So you want to leave it up to me to do. So I'm going to break up with you because there's a reason why you said that to me. And there's a reason why you said that to him as well. If you offering to break up with somebody, bitch, just break the fuck up with them. Okay? Break the fuck up with them. Don't go back on your word and don't say, well, I don't really find him attractive because now he wants to go get a whole sleeve. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Don't knock something until you try it. Just like these niggas with the beers, okay? I used to tell my husband all the time. Do not get a beard. I do not like that. That shit is gross. I don't like beards. I don't like beards. Okay. This is what I used to always say to him. I used to just like the little one line, you know, the little thin, the little thin goatee thing right there. And that's how I liked it. That's in his mustache. That's how I liked it. I thought he was, that was perfect for him. But I didn't want the beard. I didn't want the beard. And then he grew a beard out. Okay. Let me tell you something. He did FaceTime last week. He cut the beard off. Hmm. I was like, where is the hair? He cut the beard all the way off, like a baby bottom smooth. All he got is the mustache. And he even gave himself, anyone even got a fade. That's not even his hairstyle. <sighs> Hello? <sighs> what the fuck is going on here? So, like I said, don't knock something until you try it, sweetheart. Because the beard, I love the beard, okay? He looks so handsome with the beard. And looks good without it, too. But, you know, I never wanted the beard. But I like the beard. Same thing with the tattoos. My husband didn't have no tattoos when I met him. None. Now, he's tatted all up, too. And I find it to be very fucking sexy, okay? Trust me when I tell you. 
niggas be looking hard with them tattoos, with them sleeves, you know, put a little muscle, because I like the arms, put a little muscle up in that shit, with them, uh, with a whole sleeve, they could be looking good, girl, you'd be like, your whole attitude would change, I mean, you know, but to each his own, that's just your perspective, that's how you feel, y'all probably can't even see my son, y'all can't even see his tattoos in this, but he's got a whole sleeve, he's got a sleeve on another arm, he's got his whole chest, he's got his neck, he's got his hands done, you know what I'm saying, so, and he's a good person, he's a good person, so, here's my thing, sweetheart, don't knock something until you try it, but also don't use the excuse to want to break up with somebody, okay, tattoos are a nice thing, a lot of people, a lot of times people say to me, you want to be like 80 years old with a whole sleeve, what you going to do? What kind of question is that? So I'm going to be 80 years old, old as fuck, old, with a whole sleeve. What am I going to do? Mind my business? What the fuck am I supposed to do? So when I get really old, I'm supposed to go get them removed? Bitch, no. There's motherfucking old grannies that's got more tattoos than me. What the fuck? What a dumbass question. People be asking the dumbest shit, okay? Yes. You stay snoring, girl. So, yes, you guys, that's my real talk for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I got to um get off of the camera because it is 2.30, which means that I got 30 minutes to go get Mumsy. So, I'm going to get me a nice cup of cold juice, take me some pain medication. Well, ibuprofen because I don't take any more of the... um. You know, that motherfuckers gave me Percocet. I was like, oh my God, no, I don't want to take that. I did not want to take that shit for real. I did not. I felt so scared taking it. I was like, I'm going to be one of these people out here with us on drugs and is like addicted. This is the, this is what I'm saying to myself. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to be a crackhead because I'm on perks. I'm taking Percocet pills. I'm about to be a drug addict. Oh my God, no, I don't want these pills. Just leave me be. I'll just rather be in pain. This is this is me in the hospital because I really didn't want that. Because, you know, you hear shit about that. So when you hear bad things, you don't want to take that shit. Like, I, I listen, just give me a whole bunch of ibuprofen. I'm good. I'm good. But no, the dosage wasn't that high. So I took them. I did take them. And um, they didn't make me feel no different. Honestly, they really didn't take as much pain off that the ibuprofen could have, so I kind of like stopped taking them. The ibuprofen 600 um, was way better, or 800 is way better. Um, and in the hospital, I didn't have Percocet. Um, you know, through my IV, I have morphine, morph, morph, morphine, morphine, cosmin. No, not morphine, cosmin. It's um, morphine. I had morphine drops, morphine solution. So that kept all the pain off. And also, now I know why I kept sleeping. I would be on the phone talking to my husband or my kids and dozing off on the phone like a real crackhead. Like, yo, I was acting like a real freaking addict, okay? I'm on the phone and I'm like, what'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What, what'd you say? That's me the whole time. Or I'll be sitting there texting one sentence, okay? I'll be sitting there texting my kids back going to sleep you're like the cat is the cat is hungry did you feed the cat today that's how I ain't got no cat but I'm just saying it took me like 10 minutes to write one sentence one sentence one sentence okay that's how freaking drugged up I was I don't like that feeling when you can control when I'm sleeping I don't even like to sleep as it is. I'm like a motherfucking vampire. I don't want to sleep. I, I don't need to sleep. I don't do that shit when I'm dead. I got too much shit to do. Um, But yeah. So anyway, you guys, I'm glad to be back. I'm about to open this up. Oh, I know y'all probably like, what was in that package? So this is from Oxley, okay? This is from Oxley. So Oxley is, I'm going to tell y'all real quick. Oxley is a platform where you can receive um, gifted products in exchange for an honest, unbiased review or exchange for an Instagram or social media picture. So they have like really great products on there. Um, I can pick up to nine products now because I have earned my way up to nine tokens. 
And that's just the way you earn. I'm not really sure if you can get more than nine. Um, well, you probably can because I've had five to start with. I think you start with five or three, something like that. But the bigger you are, the better. Meaning, the more reviews that you do, the more tokens you earn. Each token is good for one product. So if you have nine t tokens, you can pick out nine really good products. And your store starts to evolve. So it's called the store. It's a free store. And each person has products in this store we all get the same stuff however there's a ladder to this okay meaning when you first start off there's a ladder you may only have items like from wet and wild or like from Tresemme, like you know drugstore brand products drugstore brand products like cheaper shit and then as you you know evolve and you get better at the reviews or not even better but you give more reviews you start seeing products like MAC, Issey Laurent, Givenchy, um, Lancome, um, Becca, Cosmetics. You'll see, you'll start seeing all kinds of products like that. Plus, you'll also see like, you know, the drugstore brands, like the people in the, the, the lower tier. I don't even want to call them the lower tier, but the people in the beginning tier have seen. So, you'll see all those products plus the higher end products. So, I have been doing this for like probably like three, four years now. And they have the best gifted products ever. And all you have to do is do like a demonstration or a review, a product review on the item. So I like to get like all kind of stuff um, from them. And like I said, I enjoy the stuff that I get. I can get anything from styling tools like blow dryers and things like this. So this one right here is Shave Works. This is a gel cool life um, shave works. So how you use this is you just apply the targeted LED you apply this to the targeted areas where you have shaved, okay? So say you've shaved under your armpits. You want to apply this generously um, after shaving or waxing or electrolysis directly onto the dry skin so that way it doesn't bump up or anything like that. And also, it will also clear that area from any type of, you know, like abrasions or not abrasions but any type of razor bumps or anything like that and I was really interested in this you can use this daily okay um but it's every day um use every day or every other day for maintenance and anything afterwards so you know use it in the area where it's kind of like infected with any type of razor bumps and ingrown hairs and it's just like a lotion um I do believe that this is I think this was just for women, as if I'm correct, the, the cool fix. Um, it also gives you directions and ingredients in here. Well, it doesn't say if it's for women or anything, but it is from the makers of the Anthony products. Um, trying to remember. I know Anthony, like you like I know Anthony, but... So the smell is not so, like overwhelming like you ever smell like a shaving product that is just so bad that and it's or so strong that you're like I can't take it this is not like that it has like it's it kind of smells like the barbershop a little bit if I'm correct but it doesn't have like that overbearing smell like oh my god I can't take that so I wanted to get this because funny thing is I had a product somewhat similar to this. Now, the product that I bought was available at available at Target. But you could buy it at anywhere, like a Walmart. And I bought it while I was in New York because I had shaved and I used a, a razor from my mom's house. She had brand new razors, but she gets those razors that are like just the regular big old school razor just with two. And the razors that I get are like five blades and they're conditioning. So I don't really feel the blades on my skin. So I used one of those cheaper blades. You know, I can get one blade, one run shaver for a dollar. She's getting like 10 in a pack, okay, for a dollar. So now you see what I'm saying. And I used it because that's all she had at the time. And I wanted to make sure that shit was clean as a whistle. Like, you know, I had already shaved prior to that. But I was there for a week and I wanted to go. I was now going back upstate New York to visit with my husband. So, you know, you have to have that stuff looking good, girl. You don't have to have the kitty cat look nice and cute. Okay, cut you. So I used that razor like a few days before I was leaving. And later on that night, I had the worst razor bump. Not the worst, but it was very irritating to me. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough for me to be like, uh-uh, it's not good. 
So I did go across the street and I purchased a product. I can't remember the name of it because I did have, by all means, good intentions on bringing it with me and left it there. It worked like overnight. And I promised myself, I vowed to myself that I would never, ever go through that again. So when I seen this product, the Cool Fix, um, I definitely hopped on this because this is from GetShaveWorks.com. And I do know that not just men can use this because it's not like a overwhelming scent. It's just a kind of like easygoing mellow scent. And I did read it prior to, you know, requesting this. It's good for you know, any type of ingrown hair, razor bumps, and razor burns, okay? So we all get that as men and women. And I did see a lot of good reviews on this product. And I also thought that the coloring was really cool. And plus the bottle was clear, which was allowing me to see what was actually inside the container. Because some people have a lot of issues of putting certain products on their skin that are colored or consistency or texture. So I did like the fact that they had like really awesome packaging and also that their crown kind of looks unisex. Okay. It kind of looks like it can be either male or female. All right. When it comes to the crown, but it's the cool fix. Like I said, you apply targeted gel lotion generously after shaving, waxing, or electrolysis directly onto the dry cleansed skin. Use it any AM and PM until area is clear. Use every other day for maintenance and any further hair removal. So this is good because, like I said, I don't get ingrown hairs, but I do know that men do get ingrown hair. So I'll probably only have to use this maybe a few times sparingly because I don't shave it all the time, being that ain't nobody seeing it until I'm around my husband. But I will save some of this for him because he does go get shaved. And also my son. But... I read and saw a lot of good reviews about this product, and I said I would give it a try. Necessarily, the stuff that I did use over the counter was great, but sometimes it's always nice to venture out and try another product because you might have a different type of feeling. Plus, this has a lot more packaging. There is more product. What I originally got was a tiny tube, okay, and it was $8.00 wasn't a lot in the packaging, but it did work well. So I was gifted this by Shaveworks and return. I did a product review like I'm doing right now. I just showed the product and let you guys know all about it. But I will definitely post their information below because they do have a lot of really great other products that pertain to shaving and they're unisex. So I love products that are unisex because we can both share them and use them. And that means that why does one product has to be for man and another product for woman. So what, your man's skin is tougher? It's good when you have a unisex product because that allows you to know that it's good for both and all skin types. So yes, this is by Shaveworks and this is the Cool Fix and it's good for um, razor bumps, razor burns, and ingrown hairs. Okay, but also check out Oxley because they have like some amazing products on their website that you can, you know get gifted and exchange for a review. So if you do videos, I think if you have like a thousand subscribers, you can definitely apply to Oxley. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but they also do have social media where you can, you know, also do like photos for Instagram and shit like that. Um, but I'll definitely post it down below for you guys so that y'all bitches will know. So I love you all. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, stay deep and deep delicious. I'm going to go now. My mouth is dry. I'm thirsty. I have to use the bathroom. And I think my time is up. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the other side. All you want to do is snore. That's all you want to do. You just want to snore. Huh? And what does it say? It says, your shirt says play all day, play all day. That's all you want to do is snore and get belly rubs. Wow. You, you know, you have a bed. Why don't you lay in it? Why do you always have to be up unto me? Huh? 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 Why? Why? And we're booed up. And she said we were booed up. <sighs> oh. Oh. Are we booed up? Huh? Who's booed up? Who's booed up?
Y- yes. You want a belly rub? You do, right? Who wants a belly rub? I want a belly rub.